uh, I'm Vaishak, uh, I'm from Kerala. I'm basically a hotelier with about 23 years of experience. Uh, I've been uh, working in various departments. I started as a management trainee at the Leela's. Uh, I've been with them uh, in front office and uh, in other areas as well. I've handled uh, um, right from the roles in front office, right from duty manager to the night manager to the uh, various roles there. I've handled f and in, uh, in Taj Hotels as a conference manager for uh, Taj Hotels in North Goa. Uh, and later in Taj Kumar as well. I've uh, worked as a assistant front office manager at uh, the Radisson Blue in Kuwait, uh, front office manager at the uh, Alila in Maldives and later in Alila in Goa. And uh, been an operations manager uh, for about uh, many hotels, uh, more about, about 10 years right now. So, you know, operations manager, general manager for about uh, 10 years. Mm. So in a nutshell, uh, I've got a lot of experience in uh, background sales uh, in, uh, in the front office, in FNB. And then uh, ever since I've been a general manager, basically in all of the operational and non-operational departments as well, including finance, uh, purchase, uh, engineering, I take a keen interest in basically uh, doing things, uh, projects. Um, I've done pre-openings, I've basically done uh, renovations, I've done uh, uh, things where basically that require things. So my uh, forte would uh, probably be, you know, uh, obviously again, apart from the sales, uh, the adding revenue wherever possible. Uh, looking after operational excellence of you know how we can basically make things better, uh, not only for the uh, for the employees uh, but for the uh, experience for the guests, again uh, for the all the other stakeholders as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, make sure how do we actually you know cut down costs, but then without compromising on the uh, the guest safety, you know the experience, the whole uh, thing there, and then uh, see how we can better the uh, profitability for our stakeholders, the owners or the company that we look for. So that's the nutshell of uh, me as a hotelier for the last two or three years. What's still from the side of the bush with me? I'll actually uh, say it this way. In fact, I've been, I wanted to be a hotelier since I was in 10th standard. So I've had a cousin uh, who used to be working in, uh, in, in Taj at the point of time. So I used to go see him while he was working and was inspired from him. So he's currently a general manager with Ramada and Kushan. So, uh, so you know, so I've always wanted to do that, and uh, uh, since my 12th, I've always I've had this one aim of being a hotel through and through, and that's when. So I've done my 12th, I've done my hotel management, I've always been in hotels, and I've loved this industry. In fact, uh, there's nothing that I can do if I get more of the industry. So I don't feel, uh, you know, I don't fit anywhere apart from hotels because that's where I'm. Mm. Initially, it was all I wanted to be a chef initially, but then you know, after I did my training, I, I said I want to uh, uh, do. I love to cook. I wouldn't uh, determine per se that line. Uh, then I, uh, you know, I want to be an FNB, but then I ended up being front office. But then uh, as a management trainee, you actually get exposed to a lot of for departments. So that uses a lot of uh, broad experience into various, uh, I mean, operations. And uh, you realize basically that uh, every area is important. And not only the guest facing area or the back facing area, basically, let's say uh, security guy is more important or purchase guy is more important. You know, so you can't say he is less important or whatever is that. That's something. So every area, there's a lot of things, value that we can add on to. And that really drives me. In fact, uh, how do you make life better for them and for us? Because you know, if they are happy, we are happy. You know, that whole ecosystem works that way. Mm-hmm. And as far as joining Mercury is concerned, in fact, I always wanted to I mean, work with Accor, uh, being a globally, I mean, international brand. Uh, Accor has got about, uh, you know, about uh, roughly about 40 plus brands uh, in all different segments. And uh, this property, uh, bin property uh, is one of the uh, uh, segment we have uh, uh, here of the seven properties in Chennai, so Mercury is one of them. Mm. And then uh, Mercury gave me, gave me a good, perfect gateway to actually to enter the brand and basically see how we can, you know, I mean, uh, take the brand from there. So unlike uh, other brands of Accor, where you know, which are more like a cookie cutter brand, where you know we have like everything is very similar, like every no hotel is almost similar or every I is similar. Mercury gives you a lot of uh, you know freedom to do things on your own because Merc- every Mercury product is basically like a I land with local market. So a Mercury in Chennai is very different from Mercury in Bangalore or Mercury in Mysore. So basically, they all basically adapt to what the area they come from. Their uh, service standards may be similar, but then they have a lot of freedom to work around and, you know, develop your own things in the way you uh, look after guests, the different experiences. So uh, given the experience I've got, it actually gives me a, a good platform to really, you know, uh, work, in, uh, work things that way. Be there. So the hotel uh, vision, what we've seen here is that we need to be like a market leader. So market leader, not if only for revenue, but for the guest experience. So uh, uh, in this, we are actually located in an industrial area. So 
here, like I said, uh, people don't uh, look at it as a, as a hotel or as a service provider. They look at it as a vendor. So looking at that particular, I mean, perspective. So uh, we are a vendor to a lot of this uh, in other industries, which again, uh, a lot of these are manufacturing industries and they they make uh, automobiles. So we are probably like one of, one of uh, the spare parts for them. You know, so we offer accommodation and we offer food, but then that's again one component of their whole experience, which they pr ultimately price it to the guests. So, Basically, that's one element that we have. So as far as they are concerned, basically what they look for is value for money. That's one thing. They look for quality. Quality cannot be compromised at any point of time. So basically, at, uh, the kind of guests that we have here, they're all we have all sort of experts. We have experts coming from the Far East, right from Japan to Korea to Malaysia to China to Taiwan to all the way to all the way to Europe as well. So in between, we have Indians as well. So the challenge is that basically, how do we make sure that uh, we you know have a product which is uh, very unique. At the same time, it's also local. At the same time, basically, we have to make sure we cater to all different segments of the people that come here. And we cannot offend any of them either. So let's make it put in perspective. So let's say uh, I have a menu, okay, and uh, my guest from China or Japan or let's say from Korea, they prefer to eat beef, right? I have a beef for the, on the buffet. But then I have a guest from India who say, that, okay, where do you have beef in buffet? I'm not eating here. And we have a similar guest from, I mean, Europe saying, yeah, okay, you have no beef in the buffet, I'm not eating here too. So how do you, you know, appease them? So we really have to again see how do you, there are a lot of things that we have to, I mean, balance things out and see how we take care of things. So basically our, uh, when we do those things, you know, so we, uh, I mean, we've trained our team to look after in such a holistic way that basically people look at from that perspective, okay, we know we have to look after them. They're not one particular segment, probably what, only Indians or probably only Europeans or only this. We have a big uh, mix over there. And then uh, it's all about basically how do you look after them, how do you take care of them? So. What I've realized basically is that uh, irrespective of where you're coming from, you know, if you give up a lot of personal service, then, you know, then uh, people will definitely, you know, I mean, value you and they will, I uh, don't come back to you for what we have. Well, uh, Mercure has been, uh, no, I mean, being though it's part of Accor, in fact, Mercure, uh, as a product, we've actually, I uh, mean, uh, doing something called the elimination of single-use plastics. So, uh, you see a lot of areas in the hotel where you don't see single-use plastics at all. Mm. Except few things which are there. Mm. That's one thing. Second thing is we are probably the only hotel which has really uh, gone into using EVs for the uh, transportation. So we've got a fleet of five cars right now. So we've got three three BYD cars and two Tata cars. We use them for all the office transfers. We use them for the airport transfers. So uh, if you look at all the hotels in the vicinity, none of them have these EVs on such a scale. We've used them to such an extent that we basically we are trying to basically promote a very eco-friendly mode of transportation. Mm. Again, that's again, uh, you know, more sustainable transportation that we're trying to do. So we're trying to actually eliminate all the diesel vehicles or the petrol vehicles in our fleet. And though it's expensive, we are doing it uh, so that we take care of the vaping them. So we've got a product which is basically offering you what is the, the technology which is there, offering you basically at, what, at the, you know, uh, at what the, these people can, you know, do that. And obviously what people cannot match. Third thing which actually sets apart is our food. In fact, uh, we are probably the only hotel uh, uh, where we serve all kinds of meat. So, uh, if a pure vegetarian would probably be coming in, I wouldn't say it's the best hotel to stay in, but then for a non-vegetarian, yes, it's the ultimate. In fact, uh, we serve chicken, we serve mutton, we serve pork, we serve beef, we serve corn, we serve everything. So, you know, but uh, I'm not naming people, but then if you actually go to probably XYZ hotel, probably, you know, I think uh, probably people, you know, would uh, be more traditional, just take up on probably chicken and fish and that's it. No mutton on the buffet, no pork, no beef. So we actually think, we think from the guest perspective. So, you know, okay, if I'm a person who's actually, let's say, if I'm going and staying abroad, I would rather want food from my place to be served over there. So for a guest who's actually coming from Japan or China or from Europe, you know, if he doesn't get food from his taste or probably his kind of meat where he's staying, then he wouldn't feel comfortable. So how long can he eat uh, chicken or fish, you know, all the time? You know, he has to be given a certain meat, which is basically he's used to consuming, which is... Okay for him. So we understand this particularly, can we kind of uh, put it that way. Hmm? So that way we play around. So that's the thing that we do. Third thing is, basically, fourth thing is that we actually do a lot of organic uh, cooking. We've got an organic garden wherein uh, we uh, grow vegetables and we use it in our, I mean, uh, cuisine as well. So basically, uh, if not for the a la carte menu, even for the way the buffets, we have uh, live contours wherein we promote the organic vegetables, which again, uh, uh, some may be healthy, some may not be healthy, but then vegetables are fresh. And uh, so we also, in fact, promote the use of uh, organic uh, eggs, you know, like we use cage-free eggs. So for the buffet breakfast, so 
uh, it's totally normal you have the eggs you have the the duck eggs or the you know, the quail eggs you know so we actually promote the things so basically uh, organic basically uh, things are uh, which actually which also empower the local uh, you know the uh, entrepreneurs to actually kind of grow and you know farmers to grow when we say organic you know vegetables there are farms which are there in this in this area over here become uh, uh, if you actually see about about 10 kilometers further down the line it's more of a village you know so people grow vegetables we get fresh vegetables we get the stock from there milk or even put things like that so basically so we empower local people to actually to supply to us and basically we look after them as well so that's one of the things there so in fact uh, like i said uh, we've had uh, a lot of people staying uh, from the far east so we had one such company where it was giving a lot of business and then uh, but they were complaining so so when i went for sales calls i so met them uh, and nothing really what was the issue they said they were only getting, getting food to their liking so we did a deep dive and then we realized basically that uh, the end result is that okay uh, people like the people from the far east they have a early breakfast they come at 6:30 in the morning have a breakfast and leave they come back in the evening so breakfast is main meal for them so earlier we are our menu was purely south indian north indian and conti we had nothing to do for the other guests so we were literally ignoring the far east guests so we made an effort to actually include probably a, probably the only hotel which has a chinese breakfast so we have things like the chinese donuts donut rolls we have chinese pancakes we have chinese you know things like kanji kanji especially like a, a you know we have a kanji in kerala which is more like a like a, the leftover rice they have a similar thing in china so we did a lot of research we realized a lot of food from which are very common to kerala or to tamil nadu or to sri lanka or to malaysia are there in china as well and so a lot of things like noodles you know in fact a lot of things they like have this glass noodles you have the uh, the the rice noodles you have the regular noodles you know a lot of things are used here as well so there are basically different names but then people uh, use them over there so we found that basically food is not that uh, it's difficult to make anybody can make it hmm? as long as you have the right you know the ingredients they use a lot of you know all the shallots you know these small bengal they have the thing so they use shallots they and they use the things over there and it is it's very easy to make hmm? so they probably eat a lot of meat they eat uh, chicken they eat pork in the morning they for breakfast they eat kanji in the morning they eat uh, pancakes in the morning and they're very easy to i mean cook things and we put them in the breakfast and that really turned things around then we started getting a lot of business coming in people realized okay that we of really look after guests and so we had uh, complaints taken care of people who stay from malaysia from from the taiwan or from china all these people complaints were taken addressed and we looked after them and that really helped our business really well so uh, mokyo as per the part of accord has got a program called the planet 21 which used to be there now it's actually called green key so green key is again a international program which is a sustainability program which is actually i mean uh, which uh, basically audits hotels and basically sees how green you are how sustainable you are for one thing that we've been certified so for is actually the elimination of single use plastic so this is a small thing now if you see the water bottles here the water bottles they're all glass bottles right so these water is actually though we have to buy water this water is this comes from puru we have a vendor who purifies water we have glass bottles we try to eliminate plastic over here hmm? we eliminated plastic in terms of straws that is there we eliminated bed even for the toothbrush and toothpaste we have basically toothpaste which is made from uh, the uh, cellulite so they were even the toothpaste is not plastic hmm? our toothpaste is not paste it's actually a tablet you put it in mouth you have to you know literally chew it and then become the paste so it's all made in such a way that basically we literally eliminated uh, plastic in all sort of forms that you see the thing we don't use any plastic bags we only use paper bags hmm? so like there is uh, the whole lot of things that we used in the in the kitchen in the guest areas in the, in the rooms as well i think where we've completely removed the whole plastic element it's that's something we are doing this is expensive uh, i admit it's expensive it costs us more money but then you know it's our commitment to the environment to see how best we can do it second thing like i said uh, we also promote organic food so organic uh, so we have our organic garden but then uh, we our uh, our garden is small so it doesn't really you know obviously uh, uh, you know uh, take the entire requirement of the hotel so we so i mean procure the organic things from the local community as well so vegetables you no know, beat the meat meat no i say meat it's about eggs so uh, the fresh uh, eggs you no know, the the eggs which are from duck or from the quail or you know from the things there. so we source it that way again uh, fruits that we as much as possible we, we try to take and then we also may make sure that we only give uh, fruits which are basically locally and you know and seasonal so we don't probably you know offer you fruits which are basically all the imported stuff but then maximum food would be which is again so 
could be bananas, could be chikku, could be, you know, uh, your uh, guavas, could be, you know, there. So, whatever is available, pineapples again, that really helps that thing. So, we try to support the community that way as well. So, we are actually located in an area wherein we are in the middle of industries and uh, what we realize is that unlike a normal hotel destination where, you know, uh, you know, people are more tech savvy, here people are more process oriented. So, uh, here when it comes to billing, when it comes to a lot of things there, uh, people follow a very traditional way of POs and, you know, and purchase orders and purchase regulations and everything. So, uh, it normally happens when you have a booking for a reservation for a, let's say, banquet or a reservation for a, for a, for the restaurant. So your booking comes in about 20 people and then you know and you make a bill for let's say there are 21 people you make a bill for 21 people we realize that bill will never get passed your money will never come because uh, the person who is giving you a booking is a different person a person who is paying you money is a different department different section probably different location they only go by what the what's on the black and white so the PO says 20 people you bill for 21 people though the PO must be signed by their own company people they will not process it because they work in such a system so in a normal hotel, you know, you have somebody who signed a bill, it is proof. You pay the money, that's it. But here, a lot of billing actually goes to the company, it's a building company. So, they look at those things there, then we get stuck. So, we realize basically that, okay, that uh, we have to, you know, we cannot uh, make the entire 400 companies, you know, adapt to our style. We have to adapt to them. So, we have to go one step backward, basically see how do you fit into that thing. How do we make ourselves uh, their, I mean, uh, their preferred vendor and we have to work around. So, we had a challenge initially, which we've understood. We've uh, did a root cause problem and we've said, okay, we'll work that other way around. And we work around that way. <laughs> we engage uh, with the hotel, uh, the, the team a lot. In fact, our team are called artists. So every employee is called artist. So basically it's a, it's a heart plus artist. You know, that's the, the coin, the term that you have. So uh, when we, we, so everybody basically carry the phone. So, uh, Unlike a regular hotel, every um, employee is allowed to carry a phone, is allowed to, I mean, have access Wi-Fi. You know, they can access, do anything, they can make reels on the job. They have to, no problem. We actually allow that. We have apps for the employees. In fact, they are encouraged to play. In fact, which are, which are train, there are training apps, which we encourage to play on a daily basis, and that score is counted. And there's a competition between the hotels across the brand, basically, who's actually scored more. So, we work in such a way that we are very tech friendly. That uh, for the current generation of the the millennials and the, the XYZ generation, people, if you moment you take the phone away from them, even from babies, you know, they cry. So I can't take a phone away from a, from an employee and say, okay, you know, you will have to keep a phone time off with and come and work and it doesn't work. So you get the phone to them, okay, phone is yours, but act responsibly. You know, they'll not they'll take care of things. So that's something we do. We also look after them and we, uh, in fact, yesterday, we had a staff party. So we understand, you know, for New Year's, for the Christmas, they work really hard. So. There's no way that they can really, you know, they, they have to spend time away from the family and from their friends and there's no social time. So, we make a time for them. We had a DJ. We had a thing. We had a, we had the bar open for them. Okay, you drink. You do whatever you want. You dance, you know, you, you freak out. Like, so, they had their own time, about 100 people doing their own time. So, we call, they go, okay, my team is having a party. So, you know, you want to join, you come and join. The buffet is there. The, the alcohol is there. The, the, the DJ is there. You do whatever you want to. Hmm? We take them on basically towards the very So, once in a year, we do trips. Uh, every often we do probably screenings, we, we take them for a movie outside, you know, probably we take them for a trip outside. In case, you know, the kitchen guys, service guys, we take them to restaurants outside, take them for uh, there. In case for managers, we look after them. So, uh, accommodation, we give accommodation for ladies and we accommodation for the gents as well. We give pick up and drop for all the employees. In fact, about 50% uh, of my employees get picked up and dropped in the morning because of the location that we have. We do that best. So, we, in a way, uh, it is all there and taken care of. Hmm. And uh, we have a very, uh, we have an, uh, an accord, we have a feedback, I mean, like we have an employee survey. We just uh, concluded that, I mean, the, the employee survey last year. And uh, we actually got a score which is actually higher than brand average. That way we got a score of almost 8 point, which is actually much more than what the entire average of the entire brand is. But people are happy that way, so. Other thing is that we've, uh, we pay really good salary, so I shouldn't be boasting about it, but then... Uh, uh, the uh, if you look at the minimum wages, we pay much higher than the minimum wages. Our starting salary is uniform across the board. Let's say receptionist or a you know waiter or a, a cook or you know housekeeping whatever, they all get the same salary, irrespective. And they all start at the particular salary and they grow up that way. So we don't discriminate in terms of salaries or you know where they come from or which is it. One other thing which we do basically do is we don't encourage on-the-job training. So 
it's either your industrial training and directly take an employee. There's nothing in between. So we don't we don't actually what you call uh, discriminate them. There's no what you call uh, malpractice somewhere over there. Hmm? And even IETs basically get paid really well. You know, when I was in Nigma training, I got five hundred rupees for my training. Here, IETs get paid eight thousand rupees. Industrial trainees, hmm? and your starting salary for the employees is about twenty thousand rupees. So right from there, you you finish your IIT, you bought in the six months, you know the product properly. You have a lot of trainees who have actually joined us. After the training, they come back to the college, they come and join us. So in fact, uh, they've been so happy. So the idea from, from eight becomes 20 or in the what, six months time. And they grow from there. And uh, one more thing that we have is that we have very limited uh, designation in the hotel. So in front of, if you look at front office, you have the GSA. Right away, you become a duty manager. So from 20 becomes 30 in one shot. So there's no, uh, like a supervisor, there's no executive, there's nothing. So a lot of things are cut. Right from duty manager, you become FOM. So it goes, the growth is instant, pretty much the same. Only thing is basically, you know, so we keep engage, I mean, engaging with the people. So uh, we tell them, okay, so our, what's the main thing? You have to make sure guest is happy. So if the guest is happy, then, you know, then uh, the guest comes back. Then we get business is uh, sustaining. If business comes back, basically, then we're all happy, right? We all work for the same, right? We, we work for the guest. So if, so irrespective, you know, so basically whatever the people are, at whatever level the people are, we encourage them to talk to guests, you know, make sure that, okay, that they're always the limelight and okay. Their name should always feature on the in the reviews, so you know they always so be it so be it kitchen be it housekeeping or be it service wherever it is. You no, know, even for engineering for the matter, we always ask encourage people to talk to guests and you know make sure that they are taken care of. You know people acknowledge them. Okay, their names are written somewhere over there. That you know that uh, we there. <laughs>See, I would say uh, Mercure is here to stay for a longer time. So we're not like a hotel which is there for only for three years or five years. Every hotel, you know, after five years, you know, then uh, what people do is actually they see uh, in the market generally people keep on increasing rates. So uh, it becomes a certain point that, okay, that when you increase rates beyond a certain point, you know, that uh, the market tends to, you know, basically, you know, look for other options. So uh, somebody has got a limit of paying, so you know, they have a budget for it, like, like I told you, this industry area here. In this moment, I, you know, increase my rates beyond certain limit, they look for other options. So, as a hotel, you know, my owners built the hotel to sustain for at least 10, 20 years, not for 5 years. Hmm? So, if I, if I keep on increasing rates every year, it will not help me. So, my long-term objective is to make sure that my hotel is sustainable, offers value for money, for the customer, as well as for us. So, it's a win-win. And then so it is so we have to maintain a product which is basically in line with the with the with the with the market. So what we've done basically for the last uh, you know one year is that we've actually made the room category which is actually like a privileged room, like a club floor. Wherein uh, we've added some uh, soft elements to the room. We've added like a Bluetooth speaker. We've added like you know the uh, we've actually changed the entire bedding over the, in the room. So we've added few amenities in, in the thing there where people get a lot of value. You know? So. People also, in fact, uh, they uh, they get a complimentary meal bar in the room. They get complimentary you no know, office transfer. They get you know, laundry. So, uh, though they're paying a little bit more, but then they get the value for the whole thing. So, we want to have a win-win situation where you know people don't, don't feel cheated. Okay, I'm paying so much. Okay, I'm getting a bomb or something. The same time, you know, people the, as an investor, people okay shouldn't feel bad. Okay, you know, I've got a great product, but I'm actually being unsold, and you know, and uh, I'm losing money. So it has to be win-win. So as an operator, basically we always make, you know, she's okay, we have the right product which for the market. And for the for the owner, we have to make sure we have a product which is selling the right product. And again, uh, we make sure that okay that this product, whatever strategy we're following right now should be sustainable for a long period of time. It shouldn't be a short term thing, okay. You sell it it can't be like you no, know, you make hay well the sun shines, right? So sun can, you know, it can be rainy, it doesn't mean you have to shut your hotel down. You have to hotel has sustained, right? So you have to work in such a fashion.